This year alone, there have been four erroneous releases at the Department of Corrections, two still under investigation, while the others discussed during the oversight hearing. Different officers were involved in the mistaken releases, but it was the same platoon commander who was in charge, and for both erroneous releases, the only thing issued, a letter of reprimand. What was the reason for the second letter of reprimand? Why did you feel that a letter of reprimand was sufficient after the second time? That was discussed amongst management and the decision was to give them a reprimand. Who's the management? Who's, whose ultimate decision was it to give a letter of reprimand? You said it was discussed was it, upon management. Was this like in your command staff meeting or? Yeah, it was, it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was the, the, at the time our deputy director. The deputy director right. recommended that she get a le letter of reprimand the right. second time that it was done. Right. According to Major Anton Uggen, the way erroneous releases handled in the past, a cover memo is sent to the warden, who then requests an internal affairs investigation be conducted. When that's done, a document is provided to the director to take whatever action is necessary. According to Samantha Brennan, for the two wrongful releases, which were only days apart in April, she didn't recall receiving a cover letter from the warden, but she says she did speak with the deputy director. And uh, in my discussion with uh, uh, the former Zero Two, um, he wanted to move forward on uh, some uh, disciplinary action other than a letter of reprimand, and I advised him to prepare his memo to move it forward to me so that I could move forward and meet with our staff attorney and work towards uh, uh, proposed adverse action. According to Brennan, however, she didn't receive the memo until it was too late to take any adverse action, but a memo was only found after a FOIA request was sent by KUAM requesting information on wrongful releases. So the warden didn't send you anything, the deputy director didn't send you anything, so how did you acquire the memo? So in um, July of this year, we had a FOIA request from one of the news media, and they were requesting for these individuals and what happened. And so in response to the FOIA, I asked for the files to be retrieved so that I could prepare our, our timely response. And uh, my staff looked for the documents, and eventually it was found um, in uh, an office and then was given to me so that I could prepare my timely response to the FOIA request. They located the documents in an envelope in, um, our, in an office, in his office, and then that's when it was brought to my attention. What did you do when you realized the time has lapsed and the de deputy director never gave you the official documentation? What did you do to the deputy director as a director? What, was, what is your authority? Once I received it, um, I, uh, I, I believe I had words of him that it was delayed. And actually, ma'am, I, I don't recall if I had a uh, conversation with him at the time. It also wasn't clear how many times this same platoon commander could have wrongfully released other inmates or detainees since the two April incidents. I'm surprised we'd that's not to, part of the investigation some, process. We'd have to do some research, but ma'am, we'd look into it. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised that we wouldn't want to find out how, how many people or how many inmates or detainees she has released after these two erroneous releases. Sir Lahi, meanwhile, no longer with DOC, he resigned one day after Jordan Mayor Jesse Blouse was indicted in federal court on charges related to bribery and extortion. The mayor accused of issuing a U.S. Postal Service cluster box in the village to a confidential informant posing as a drug trafficker. During the arraignment, Terlahi was the only name dropped by an FBI agent in connection to an incident that occurred at a barbecue. Terlahi is the son of the chair on public safety, Senator Jose Pito Terlahi. The reason why this is such a big deal for me is because there was um, there's a case ongoing, right, involving involving the mayor, and it was mentioned in the trial, in the comments that the mayor wanted fifteen thousand dollars to release inmates from DOC, like he had connection to DOC officers. 
And so this is the, the big elephant in the room, like we need to find out exactly what's going on in the chain and find out how to fix these, these things and hold those accountable. It was also revealed during the oversight hearing, DOC can't find the documents from erroneous releases prior to 2019. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports.